This workshop teaches about capacitors and resistors through the power of music, in particular the Moog synthesizer. Together the capacitor and the resistor are what makes a synthesizer synthesize. The workshop has been developed over 60 one hour long session with 12 to 14 year olds, but it'll work for anyone who would like to know a little bit about electronics in general and electronic music in particular. The search for electronic music began almost as soon as radio was invented. Marconi, the man who first transmitted a signal across the Atlantic, had to listen to the most awful sounding squeals and wails. Half his team tried to eliminate the noise so they could hear the signal. The other half wondered if there might be a way to harness the noise to make music. After decades of experiments, in 1962, Telstar drilled its way into our minds and gripped the top of the charts for six agonizing weeks. The guitar was a real guitar, but a year later, the BBC Radiophonics Workshop brought us the Doctor Who theme. Everything was electronic now, including the guitar. A year later, the Moog synthesizer appeared and the world would never be the same. To begin with, we study how sound is made, using a simple trick anyone can perform to show that sound is a series of clicks that beat on the eardrum. Watch that flap of paper as it vibrates. We're going to make the first sound ever made by any animal on planet Earth ever. The fart. The sound is made by the paper flapping against the end of the tube. Synthesizers use capacitors to make the same string of clicks. A capacitor can be charged up and then discharged. There it goes. This bucket is an analogy. We fill it up till it reaches capacity, and then it tips out. And every time it tips, it's like when that paper hits the end of the tube, you get a pulse. We can turn the capacitor's electric pulses into clicks, and they can be turned into a sound using this kit. This will allow us to make capacitors from anything, cake trays, drink cans, even people. Anything that will take a charge and release it again and thus make clicks. And crucially, make music because when the clicks go faster, we hear them as a note. Now, what can you hear there? There's like, like it's it's waving. Waving. It's clicks. It's those clicks, but when you take them apart, they get faster and faster. And then we can't hear them. And then they turn into a note. Exactly the same. Those clicks are the same, but now you hear them as notes rather than clicks. Isn't that exciting? That's music of sorts. But it's hard to control it, which is where the resistor comes in. And you can see that the LED lights. If I put in some of the resistance into the circuit, you see that the LED is less bright, so we can control the brightness of the LEDs by putting in a resistor. A simple demonstration with the bucket analogy shows how frequency changes with resistance. If we raise the resistance, the capacitor charges up slower, it discharges slower, the clicks are slower. That is, the frequency of clicks is lower, the note is lower. If I reduce my resistance, I should get a higher note. Shall we see? <laughs> that was indeed a higher note, wasn't it? I worked then. Good. Thank you very much, Jonathan. A big round of applause, I think. The capacitor system is now boxed up and a length of resistance wire is given to each group who can change the resistance by using longer or shorter lengths of wire depending on where they place their finger. As a finale, the students form a screechy orchestra and can play quite complex tunes together such as Happy Birthday. <laughs> 